chemical process principle by Professor A. K. Shadu Khan, Department of Chemical Engineering, NIT Durgapur. I will discuss on the topic humidity and psychometry, course objective, atmospheric air and its composition, property of moist air, important psychometric properties, psychometric chart and its use. Composition of atmospheric air. Atmospheric air consists of many permanent gases, water vapor, many pollutants. The presence of pollutants varies in place to place. For air conditioning and other uses, pollutants has to be removed first and the processed air has to be utilized. So, hence, actually the air may be considered as a mixture of gaseous species and water vapor. This, what, this air generally known as moist air. Hence, moist air may be assumed to be a mixture of dry air and water vapor. The standard composition of dry air is considered to be fixed and the standard composition of dry air was fixed by international joint committee of psychometric data in 1949. According to this committee, the composition of air may be considered as oxygen mole percentage about 21 percentage, nitrogen 78 percentage, argon 0.39 percentage, whereas carbon dioxide it is only 0.03 percentage. The average molecular weight of air is assumed to be 28.996 based on this composition. Composition of moist air. Generally, moist air is considered as the dry air and the amount of water vapor present in dry air may vary from a 0 to a maximum value at a given temperature and barometric pressure. The condition when air contains the maximum amount of water vapor, it is called the saturated air. It saturated air in natural equilibrium is established between the dry air and water vapor. Property of moist air. Moist air up to 3 atmospheric pressure generally follows the ideal gas law. So, both the dry air and water vapor assume to obey the ideal gas law up to 300 at uh, 3 atmospheric pressure. The total pressure P t it is the sum of the partial pressure of dry air and the partial pressure of water vapor present in it. P t is the barometric pressure or total pressure and P v is the partial pressure of water vapor whereas, P A is the partial pressure of dry air. That important psychometric properties which are required to be known and that dry bulb temperature short name is D B T, saturated partial pressure of water vapor, humidity of moist air, wet bulb temperature dew point temperature, specific volume, enthalpy of moist air, humid heat capacity and adiabatic cooling temperature. These are the main important psychometric properties one must know in order to understand the humidity and psychometric study. What is dry bulb temperature? The dry bulb temperature, it is the temperature of moist air measured by standard thermometer, ordinary thermometer which measures the temperature of air or any other temperature measuring instrument, it is known as the dry bulb temperature. Saturated partial pressure of water vapor, it is denoted as P s. It is the saturated vapor pressure of water vapor at the existing dry bulb temperature of the moist air this is the saturated partial pressure. The saturated vapor pressure P s can be obtained from the thermodynamic tables or chart. 
thermodynamics table or charts are generally any thermodynamics books it is available the it can also be calculated by many empirical equations antoine equation is one such equation to calculate the vapor pressure of water antoine equation says log of p s is equal to a constant a minus another constant b by another constant c plus t this is an empirical equation so p has to be calculated in terms of millimeter hg where t is to be in degree centigrade a b c are the empirical constant for water in the different temperature range it has two values one sets of values from 0 to 100 degree centigrade the a e values b values and c values are given whereas other sets of values are valid for another temperature range in the range of 40 to 100 degree centigrade and if we use this three values in this equation we will be getting the p s that means the saturated vapor pressure of water at the given temperature t and another important factor for psychometric calculation is the humidity it is in fact one of the most important parameters to know the condition or state of air what is humidity humidity it is the amount of water vapor present per unit quantity of dry air at the existing dry bulb temperature and barometric pressure relative humidity is another measurement the by definition it is the ratio of mole fraction of water vapor in the moist air to that of the mole fraction of water vapor in the air under saturated condition at the given temperature and pressure by definition so hr may be represented as that pv by ps because mole is directly proportional to the partial pressure hence the h r is in the equation it is p v by p s that is the ratio and when it is expressed in the percentage it is multiplied with 100 and generally we get the part we get the percentage value in the h r and p s which signifies the saturated air partial pressure of water vapor. The other way of representing the humidity is the molar humidity that molar humidity it is represented in the forms of moles of water vapor present per moles of dry air at the existing dry bulb temperature and barometric pressure. By definition Hm it is the molar humidity is equal to moles of water vapor by moles of dry air. It may be noted here that both are in the moles and it is in ratio and moles of water vapor is nothing but according to the ideal gas equation it is p v partial pressure of water vapor into the total volume divided by r t, t is the existing temperature and similar way we can represent the moles of dry air in terms of p into a into the v divided by same r into t r is the universal gas constant and when that equation is simplified it is the ratio of two partial pressures the numerator is the partial pressure of water vapor and denominator pt minus pv it is nothing but partial pressure of dry air so molar humidity can be represented in terms of the partial pressure of water vapor divided by the partial pressure of dry air. There is one more presentation for humidity that is called the absolute humidity. Previous definition H m it was representing the in terms of mole uh, that this definition remains the same only the moles has to be converted into the absolute mass that is kg of water vapor divided by the kg of dry air. So, the previous equation remains the same and with that equation 
you have to just multiply the numerator with the molecular weight of water vapor that is the 18.035 and the denominator with the molecular weight of air that is 28.996. The factor comes to be 0 0.622 into the P V by P T minus P V that is nothing but the H M. That means, absolute humidity is equal to 0 0.622 into the H M. The absolute humidity H it is the function of both barometric pressure and the existing dry bulb temperature. There is degree of saturation, degree of saturation H p it is the ratio of absolute humidity of saturated moist air at the existing dry bulb temperature and the barometric pressure. H p is the another representation of the humidity, but in terms of percentage that it is it is the ratio of H by H A H S. H is the absolute humidity of the air and H S is the same air if it is saturated into the 100 it is coming in terms of the percentage. So, we have previously shown that both H and H S can be represented in terms of the partial pressure. So, if we represent H in terms of partial pressure it is nothing but partial pressure of water vapor divided by the partial pressure of the air which is again can be calculated from the total pressure if we subtract the partial pressure of water vapor that is P T minus P V. What about H S? It is the same humidity under the saturated condition that is why P V will be replaced by the P S, P S is the saturated partial pressure and under the saturated partial pressure condition P T minus P S is the partial pressure of the air dry air. So, the ratio comes as P V by P T minus P V into P T minus P S by P S into the 100 in terms of the percentage. So, we are having four ways to represent the humidity. The one, one is the absolute humidity H in terms of kg of water vapor by kg of dry air in terms of moles it is the H m molar humidity it is the moles of water vapor divided by the moles of dry air there is another more relative humidity and the fourth one is the percentage humidity H p these are the ways how to represent the humidity in different form in psychometric calculation and H s in this expression it is the absolute humidity of saturated air. The next important factor or parameter in the psychometric is the weight bulb temperature. It is the equilibrium temperature attained by a very small amount of liquid water when it is vaporizing into a large volume of unsaturated air. Initially, the liquid it is assumed to be has the same temperature as the gas. No heat is supplied externally to the liquid and the liquid has large surface area in proportion to its mass. The large surface area indicates that means, during the vaporization process area plays a very important role and there is no hindrance for evaporation of water into the air. The liquid will spontaneously cool to supply the latent heat of vaporization that is why no external heat has to be supplied when the liquid will supply the spontaneously the latent heat of vaporization obviously, the liquid water gets cooled down and ultimately it attains an equilibrium temperature that equilibrium temperature generally we call it the weight bulb temperature and it is denoted by T w. It may be noted T w the weight bulb temperature measured by an weight bulb thermometer it is always less than the dry bulb temperature of the gas. How to measure the weight bulb temperature using an weight bulb thermometer it has been shown in the figure here. 
and weight bulb thermometer nothing but an ordinary thermometer as you can see the main thermometer the the vertical line it is indicating the main thermometer ordinary thermometer and ordinary thermometer that mercury bulb it is plugged with the cotton plug and the cotton plug is moist with the water that cotton plug it can be seen from the figure that cotton plug is always immersed in the water and by capillary action it is always moist that means water moist moisture uh, at the surface of the cotton plug is continuously getting vaporized into the flowing air and the water vapor is going from liquid water to the air and latent heat of vaporization during this process is taken from the water body. Hence, gradually the water is getting in cool down and the surface of the surface of the cotton plug uh, obviously will be colder than the ambient air and that temperature will be recorded by the thermometer. This recorded temperature is denoted by the weight bulb temperature and this is the working principle of the weight bulb thermometer. The condition is it is expected it is it is exposed in the ambient of unsaturated air that means air has to be unsaturated so that moisture continuously get evaporated and enters in the air. The vaporization take place from the external surface of the wet wick. The thermometer will record the wet bulb temperature at steady state. That means, to st start with if you take the reading there may be certain deviation from the steady state. That is why it is advisable not to take the temperature quickly you keep the system in the ambient air and after certain time when it will reach the steady state that time if you measure if the temperature recorded by the thermometer is noted that is the weight bulb temperature. And this weight bulb thermometer working principle and ordinary thermometer working principle is same except there is an moist cotton plug which continuously supplying the water water for vaporization. So, this is the weight bulb temperature. In the weight bulb temperature that concept it is mandatory it is essential to understand the concept of weight bulb temperature understand the combined heat and mass transfer around the weight wick of the weight bulb. During the vaporization process there is an mass transfer operations where from the mass is getting transferred obviously, mass is getting transferred from the surface of the weight wick to the ambient air. That means, humidity of the weight surface is slightly higher than the humidity of the that air. That is why there is a mass transfer gradient concentration gradient this is nothing but h 2 minus h 1 that is when multiplied with mass transfer coefficient k w the entire thing is an mass flux that is k g per meter square per second that is the amount of water is getting vaporized into the air. What is the amount of heat or energy involved in this process? This is obviously it may be noted the temperature of the air is T 1 and temperature of the surface of the weight wick it is T w. T w is the surface of the weight wick and where from the heat is getting transferred? Heat is getting transferred from air to the surface of the weight wick. So, what is the temperature gradient? T 1 minus T w. If we multiply with the heat transfer coefficient h it is nothing but the heat flux it is joule per meter square per second. So, here k w and h c they are the mass and heat transfer coefficient respectively. So, two operations one is mass transfer another one is the heat transfer. During this mass transfer operation if we take the energy balance for 1 kg of dry air to flow the 
energy for vaporizing the K w into H 2 minus H 1 amount of water to be vaporized, we have to multiply the entire mass of water into the latent heat of vaporization of water. That is why K w H 2 minus H 1 into lambda, this is the heat requirement to vaporize the water. That amount of heat obviously, is getting supplied from the convective heat transfer H c T 1 minus T w at steady state both has to be equal and from there after rearrangement we can finally, get the expression of T w is equal to T 1 minus K w by H c into H 2 minus H 1 into lambda. So, this is the theoretical expression of the weight bulb temperature. If we note down that H c by K w by C p m m this is an dimensionless group and is known as Lewis number and scientist Lewis he has carried out a series of experiment in the taking the air and water and different condition and surprisingly it has been found the value is near to unity. And from there we will get the ratio K w by H c is nothing but 1 by C p m, C p m is the mean heat capacity of the air water mixture. So, if we substitute the expression of K w by H c in the previous expression, the final expression become T w is equal to T 1 minus lambda by C p m into H 2 minus H 1. That temperature T w is function of solely the inlet condition. What are the inlet condition? Inlet temperature T 1, that inlet humidity H 1 and the H 2 is nothing but the saturated humidity at the surface of the wet wick. That the measurement of dry bulb temperature T w and the um, sorry the measurement of the wet bulb temperature T w and the barometric pressure one can fix the state of air and other required properties can be estimated accordingly. Thus, T w is the function of inlet temperature and inlet humidity. This is not an unique function. There may exist several combinations of T i and H i which may lead to the same T w. It is obviously possible because there are two variables, many combination, linear combination is possible and they produce the same T w. So, thus many inlet conditions which may result the same weight bulb temperature a line can be drawn through all such points and they will called the weight bulb temperature W B T lines. The and it will be discussed in the psychometric chart this weight bulb temperature lines are there. How they are constructed this is the way. The concept of obviously, the weight bulb temperature uh, to understand it, it is essential to understand the process of combined heat and mass transfer during humidification operation. Then another important factor is dew point temperature. When a unsaturated moist air is cooled at constant pressure, the temperature at which the moist air becomes saturated and on further cooling the water vapor start condensing that particular temperature is called the dew point temperature. And approximate equation may be used to estimate the dew point temperature from the dry bulb temperature and relative humidity. The I already discussed the what is dry bulb temperature and what is relative humidity. This is an empirical equation. Generally, it has been found experimentally measured the dew point temperature fits well with this expressions. And there are one dry bulb temperature that has to be given inserted in this equation in degree centigrade and whereas, HR it has to be given in the relative form it is the unit less and their term is ln HR that has to be noted in this equation. Now, there are many important properties for humid air. What is the meaning of humid air? Humid air is nothing but the mixture of dry air as well as the water vapor associated with it. Specific volume is another important property. 
it is the sum of the volume of 1 kg of dry air and the volume of water vapor associated with the moist air at the existing temperature and pressure. The point to be noted there is a sum of two volumes, one volume is 1 kg of dry air and associated amount of water vapor volume. What is the meaning of 1 kg of dry air? So, if we divide it with the molecular weight, so 1000 gram by 28.996 it is nothing but the g mole of dry air and what is the amount of moles present moisture, uh, moisture if we multiply with HM, so it will be the moles of moisture. So, that means total moles is nothing but the dry air 1000 by 28.996 plus 1000 by 28.996 into the HM that is the total moles. So, what is the volume according to the ideal gas law PV is equal to NRT if we use that equation. So, Vm is nothing but the this factor into 1 plus HM by R into RT by PT is the total pressure that has to be indicated by the barometer or bar it is called the barometric pressure and T is the dry bulb temperature. Enthalpy of moist air again it is the sum of enthalpy of 1 kg of dry air and the enthalpy of water vapor associated with the moist air at the existing temperature and pressure. What is the reference enthalpy? The enthalpy of dry air and liquid water at 0 degree centigrade is assumed to be 0. Hence, H is equal to H A is the enthalpy of air and H A into H it is the enthalpy of the vapor water vapor associated with it. Hence, the H is nothing but the two components it is the H A and H B. So, from there we can if we substitute in terms of C P into T. So, H A is the C P A that specific heat of air into T plus the lambda plus C P V into T. C P V is the specific heat of water vapor into the H. It may be noted here that in the component of water vapor enthalpy there are two parts latent heat of vaporization as well as the sensitive heat, but if for the air only the sensible heat that is C P A into T. The values of C P A and C P V generally we take the mean value that is 1.005 and 1.88 kilo joule per kg per degree centigrade. Another important point to be noted the lambda in this equation it is assumed that water is getting vaporized at 0 degree centigrade. So, lambda corresponds to the latent heat of vaporization at 0 degree centigrade literature it has been reported it is 2501 kilo joule per kg that value has to be used in this equation. Humid specific heat of moist air it is the sum of specific heat of 1 kg of dry air and specific heat of water vapor associated with the moist air at the existing temperature and pressure. So, C P H expression of C P H is nothing but specific heat of dry air C P A plus specific heat of water vapor into the H and that is the C P H is the humid specific heat the unit is SI unit kilo joule per kg degree centigrade and H is the absolute humidity of moist air. Measurement of psychometric properties. So, Gibbs phase rule suggests that the thermodynamic state of moist air is fixed by barometric pressure and any two other independent properties. One of the property could be the measurement of dry bulb temperature as its measurement simple and quite accurate. The measurement of humidity and dew point there is lots of uncertainty that is why there it is not so accurate. The second one may be the wet bulb temperature by an wet bulb temperature measuring in thermometer. Another important factor is the adiabatic cooling. When the warm moist air is cooled in constant contact with vaporizing water adiabatically the process is called the adiabatic cooling. The latent heat of vaporization for water is supplied by the expense of sensible heat of moist air. The temperature of adiabatic evaporation generally corresponds to the wet bulb temperature and it will be shown in the following figure. There is a moist air from the left hand side it is flowing in an insulated chamber there is liquid water the temperature equilibrium temperature is T A and wet bulb temperature measured by the wet bulb thermometer it is the T W and it has been found that T A and T W are almost same there is a theoretical background 
and we will discuss it in little, little while. And moist air what is coming out after saturation the temperature is T A and it is fully saturated that is why the absolute humidity is H W. If we do the energy balance equation during the process for infinite decimal amount of water d h kg of water into when it is vaporizing into the moist air containing 1 kg of dry air, the equation becomes lambda into C p v that I have already discussed that is the enthalpy associated and right hand side there is a temperature another energy and if we balance it that equation comes like this and C p h is the heat capacity of humid air that I already discussed that expression. And finally, if we substitute and rearrange, we will get a differential equation. And if we solve this differential equation, we will get the final equation and written here. And finally, we will get a simple equation in terms of the adiabatic saturation temperature T A in terms of inlet temperature and the humidities. And the mean heat capacity 1.005 plus 1.86 is W is represented by C p m. C p m is the mean heat capacity. The temperature T a of adiabatic evaporation correspond to the experimentally measured wet bulb temperature and if we note it very carefully the same type of expression exactly the same expression we have derived for the wet bulb temperature that um, combined energy and mass balance equation. So, they are actually the same. Actually, vapor pressure equilibrium is established at the air water interface that is why they are same and moreover the Lewis number is 1 for air water system that is why both the expressions are same and adiabatic cooling line and the wet bulb temperature line they coincides. Then finally, the psychometric chart it is a graphical representation of humidity versus the dry bulb temperature with varying percentage saturation plotted in the chart the left hand side of the chart represents the 100 percent saturation that left hand side extreme end left hand side is 100 percent saturation and right hand side extreme is the 10 percent and other is the intermediate. The ordinate it represents the absolute humidity kg of water vapor by kg of dry air where the, the abscissa it is the dry bulb temperature and slant green lines they are the wet bulb temperature lines and they are also the uh, adiabatic cooling lines. This is the typical psychometric chart. So, any property or any state on the psychometric chart is shown by the blue dot and that indicate what is the psychometric properties. So, from that chart we can see the sub corresponding to the psychometric point blue, di, blue dot it has an humidity of 0 0.04 that is the absolute humidity and if we cool the same air without changing its humidity that indicates the horizontal red line and eventually it touches the 100 percent line from there if we draw a vertical line you will get the saturated condition without adding any water vapor where at which temperature it is getting saturated it is getting saturated as 36 degree centigrade that is why this corresponds to the dew point temperature. What is the dry bulb temperature? The original blue dot it is on the 70 degree dry bulb vertical line. So, that is why dry bulb temperature is 70 degree. What is the wet bulb temperature? If we draw a slant that green line that parallel to the other green lines the dotted line it shows the wet bulb temperature corresponds to 47 degree centigrade. So, textbook followed for this discussion. It is the chemical process principles part 1 material and energy balance second edition by Hagen, Watson and Ragat. Thank you.